Welcome back to Comic Universe, the only nerd-centric thing you need in your life. And today, I'm going to be talking about my top 10 favorite John Carpenter films. And I'm going to be honest with you guys, John Carpenter is probably my favorite director. There's a ton of movies, not just in horror, but also in action and sci-fi that he has done that have just been completely epic. Um, whenever I think favorite directors, John Carpenter's usually number one. It's, it's, yeah, it's definitely number one for my favorite director. From Halloween to They Live, you can't go wrong with them. So, these are my top ten favorite John Carpenter films. And also, you're probably wondering, but DPZ, shouldn't this be wait, shouldn't this be held off till October? Well, like I said, John Carpenter's done films outside of the horror genre. While he's best known for it, he has strayed away from it and done some kick-ass action films. So I get away with that. Also, since, you know, if they can do, you know, if Starbucks can give us goddamn pumpkin spice, <laughs> can give us goddamn pumpkin spice first thing September, then damn it, I can talk about John Carpenter movies. That is my right as a fucking American citizen. Anyway... So let's get started. And keep in mind also, this is my this is just my personal favorites. If you think a, a, a list should be high, a movie should be higher or lower, or not existent on the list, that's totally fine. I'm always interested to hear what you guys have to say. So yeah, let's get started with uh, my number ten, Village of the Damned, which is a remake that John Carpenter was a part of. This is a neat little film, and honestly, it really does work in that he really brings a lot of cool effects, and the kids in here are probably by far the scariest since the original film with uh, uh, with George Sanderson. So this is a neat, uh, it's a neat little gore fest. There are some vi really violent scenes, and I will admit that some of the scenes do drag a bit, but it does make up for those goddamn creepy kids. Number nine, Christine. I don't usually say this about cars your age. Well, sometimes. Kudos if you got that reference to a certain song. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, number nine, Christine, the Stephen King adaptation. Christine was actually a one of my first Stephen King films I watched growing up. Pro I don't know why my parents let me do this at a young age. In fact, I remember it. I was like five years old when I first watched Christine. And... It's a violent movie, but it never got, well, oh, there were some pretty violent parts, but it never got to the level of, like, other Stephen King stuff. The characters are all really great, and that's probably in, in part to the filming dire direction of John Carpenter, who usually has characters um, who are these, you know, down-on-their-luck or very, like, average Joe kind of characters, but not only that... His filmings, his, the sets for his film, filming process were very loose and, you know, easygoing. So everyone, by the end of the film, were very cl uh, tight-knit and close. So that was kind of neat, and that really shows that kind of uh, film direction that Carpenter had for all of his films of being, you know, easygoing and fun, and it transitions well here for everybody in the film. Yeah, it's actually... I know this isn't a lo well-looked-on for um, most Stephen King adaptations, but it's, in my opinion, one of my favorites of the Stephen King movie adaptations. I kind of would like to see a remake, but without, you know, it would be hard to top the Carpenter film. So, moving on to number eight, Halloween 3, Season of the Witch. Wait, 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 don't go, don't go, don't go! Hear me out. Yes, I'm fully aware that this is the movie without Michael Myers in it. I am fully aware that this movie deviates from the Halloween plot. But that was the point. The original plot, that the idea that John Carpenter and Deborah Hill had was that Halloween was meant to be a franchise. But unfortunately, since Halloween, you know, the internet wasn't around in the 80s, that was kind of a problem, to, a little hard to convey. So a lot of people were just kind of stupid and went, where's Michael Myers? But I can understand since, you know, mass communication wasn't exactly, you know, avail social media wasn't available to the public then. Um... So that was the uh, so that was kind of the thing, but on as it's and I know it took me it, this movie has get garnered a cult following, and even I used to not like this film, but after sitting down and watching Season of the Witch, gotta say it's not bad. I really in, dig Tom Atkins as a char as a average Joe type character. Again, it's another char the type of character formula Carpenter follows because he while he's a likable dude, you do see he's committing infidelity, but you. 
don't know if you want to root for him or not, and he's caught up in this conspiracy with witches and cyborgs and whatnot. It's so goddamn weird and so Carpenter that it works on every level for me. It's This film is not for everyone, especially if you're a diehard Michael Myers fan, but on its own, honestly, it's pretty good. If you just called it Season of the Witch, no one would... I guarantee you, if this film wasn't part of the Halloween franchise, this movie would be well looked at as a cult classic uh, horror film. But, unfortunately, it has the Halloween tagline to it, so what can you do? So, but, yeah, that's, but this is, that's where my opinion really came in, so there you go. Moving right along to number seven, Assault on Precinct 13. This is a grim, gritty action film with a, with a bunch of cops and inmates trying to fight corrupt cops in a police precinct. I know this movie got a remake, and a lot of people remember the remake more, but the original 70s film is really kick-ass and brutal. Um, give it, I would highly recommend you guys checking it out whenever you get the chance. This definitely cemented a, a Carpenter to have a big action influence as well. It was one of his first action films. So, where do we go from here? Well, at number six, I, could, I have to say this. I have come to chew bubble gum and kick ass. And I'm all out of gum. That's right, at number six, none other than They Live. They Live is such a freaking awesome cult film, and it really plays on the whole idea of consumerism while still being a cool sci-fi film. Roddy, Par uh, Roddy Piper and Keith David are an epic duo. There's, this movie is so qu uh, quotable. There's just tons of action and, and, you know, a good message that's not in your face either. Um, you know, it's really a great political message, but again, it doesn't go overboard and go in your face either. And I like that. I really dig that, a that aspect of this film. So at number six, they live. Now we're getting into the top five. And at number five is Escape from New York. That's right. Goddamn Skate Pliskin at, in, the, in this house. Or in this bitch. I ruined the sentence. Fuck me. Uh, Escape from New York is such a balls-to-the-wall, insane, dystopian action film that, you, you know, watching it from beginning to end just puts a smile on my face. It's just loads of fun. Kurt Russell is epic, and this was another action film that solidified that John Carpenter could not only do horror films, but also action films. I don't understand why Snake Plissken is not one of those well-remembered action heroes. I, it boggles my goddamn mind. So... Let's move back, so let's move on to number four. At number four, The Fog. This is another great collaboration film between John Carpenter and Deborah Hill. It also features, again, Tom Atkins from Season of the Witch, as well as Jamie Lee Curtis at, uh, playing a hitchhiker, which is really neat. A lot of headcanon is... I love the headcanon that since, the, since Jamie Lee Curtis's head... Um, character is a hitchhiker. I love the headcanon that it was really Laurie Strode, and this is how she got to, uh, you know, the town in California. Um, because, yeah, Halloween does take place in uh, Ohio, and this is, like, it's somewhere on the, like, the northern east coast, and she was bebopping around the world after faking her death until she eventually became a, a um, principal at that academy um, in age 20. So I dig that hat, hat, headcanon. This is a great little horror film. There's a lot of tension in here. The effects are really cool. And this is actually, fun fact, was one of the first John Carpenter films I ever watched as a kid. And I remember it distinctly first watching this film in because my dad used to work as a fireman. And the uh, fire, uh, you know, some of the firemen had this break room that w the kids could go into and we were, they were watching The Fog. And I remember at the end of the film, I was like, ooh, this is freaky. One of the firemen came up behind me and grabbed me by the shoulder and said, Ah, oh, beware of the fog! You're a dick, Glenn, by the way, if you're watching this. Um, <laughs> so, that that really stuck out to me. But this is a great little horror film. Again, really underrated. Um, and I don't understand why. So let's move on to number three. Are you are you shocked, uh, Michael, you know, how the original Halloween film is, not, is on here? Oh, you're not? Yeah. But you're probably shocked that it's not, like, number one. Why is it getting the bronze medal? Well, that's because there are two other films on here that I really enjoy. But what more can I say about Halloween other than it was a great little independent horror film that not only launched, you know, an icon of horror for the character of Michael Myers, but also launched helped launch the career for John Carpenter. An excellent, you know, horror film. It's greatly paced. It's well-paced. 
There's great tension. I know a lot of the kills are pretty tame, but that's not the point of the film. The film is that you're supposed to be on edge, and even today watching this film, I'm still on edge. In fact, one time I was watching, I watched the movie alone at, at the house, in my house, and I spent 10 minutes checking every room because I heard a noise upstairs, and I was like, I know it's nothing, but this movie's got me so wound up. And I've seen this movie, like, a bunch, guys. I've seen this movie, like, a bunch. So, yeah, to still have that effect on a person is, you know, really commends credit where credit is due. So, let's go on to number, you know, to number two. And at number two, we have none other than Big Trouble in Little China. Yeah, this movie is insane, wacky, and all-around fun. Jack Burton, uh, Jack Burton, played by Kurt Russell, is a great character. There's great one-liners. Um, James Hong, uh, you know, James Hong as the villain. God damn, this such, this is such a great film and another great Kurt Russell John Carpenter collaboration. If you haven't seen this movie and you love out there wacky film, wacky stories, what are you doing with your life? Go check this out. Hell, Boom Studios did a crossover with this and Escape from New York. I have yet to read that comic, but I really want to. So, you're probably wondering at this point, well, what could be at number one, DPZ? If it's not Halloween or Big Trouble, what could it be? What else could it be other than The Thing? One of the best horror films, one of the best remake, probably the best horror remake, and one of the best films that John Carpenter has ever done. The effects in here are spectacular. The characters, the tension, the atmosphere, all of it culminates into a wonderfully dark and sinister film. This movie, to this day, just wows me every time. All of the characters um, in here are fantastic. It's, um, you know, of course the creature, the thing itself is terrifying, and the effects work beats out the practical effects work from the 80s beats out a good chunk of bad CGI that you see today. So, yeah, at number at number 1, at least for me, it's got to be the thing. So there you go, guys. Those are my top 10 favorite John Carpenter films. Think of this as like if you really want to go get down and dirty into it, um Think of it as like a pre, you know, a bit of a prelude to the Halloween season that's quickly coming upon us. So I figured, you know, since uh, you know, I was actually watching The Fog and I thought of this list. So here on Comic Universe, we don't, we do do some top ten lists, but this is the first one. I was like, I want to talk about movies from a specific director, and here we are now. <laughs> um, so as always, I'm really interested to know what you guys have to say. And again, I know some of my picks were a tad unconventional, especially with Halloween 3 on this list. Um, no matter where it is, that's probably going to be like, what the fuck? But I think you guys can all agree on the top three in the least. Um, so that's, you know, again, but keep in mind, guys, once again, this is just my personal opinion. If you think a movie should be higher or lower on this list or not on this list at all, that's totally fine. No ill will against you. I'm just saying, um, you know, these are just my personal favorites of John Carpenter. And trust me, I've got a lot more of his that I really wanted to put on here. Um, so this was a tough list for me. But anyway, so you guys tell me in the comments below, what are your top ten favorite John Carpenter films? And once again, hit that bell, subscribe to us, and once again, see you once more in the universe.